All right, in this one, we're going to look at a type of calculus problem called an optimization problem. An optimization problem, uh, optimized means to kind of find the greatest or least of something, the maximum or the minimum of something. So these type of problems are the problems where it asks you to find the max or the longest something can be, or maybe the minimum or the shortest something can be, called an optimization problem. Uh, and this one tells us a 216 square meter rectangular pea patch is to be enclosed by a fence and divided into two equal parts by another fence parallel to one of the sides. What dimensions for the outer rectangle will require the smallest total length of fence? And how much fence will be needed? So analyzing that, they're asking us for the smallest total length of it. So kind of the first thing you want to think here is, well, what am I trying to optimize? What am I trying to do? Well, I'm trying to find the smallest or shortest perimeter of this fence. All right, so I'm trying to find the shortest. Uh, how am I going to go about that? Well, we're calculus students. We uh, are math people, and we know that basically anytime time I'm trying to solve a problem, I should think of an equation. So that's kind of the first thing we're going to do is, what's an equation to model this? We're dealing with perimeter. So what's an equation to talk about the perimeter of this fence? To do that, um, let's draw out a picture. Always great to draw out a picture. So you have a rectangular pea patch, like so. Um, and Interesting with this, it's divided into two equal parts by another fence parallel to one of the sides. So I've got this right here. Now, as far as the perimeter goes, how can I uh, write an equation here? Well, we can just call this my width and this my length. Well, that means I have one length there, another here, another here, and one up top. So I can call my perimeter equal to 2 times the width plus 3 times the length. All right, so that's what the perimeter is, and I want that to be the shortest possible value. Well, the shortest possible value such that it still encompasses or still encloses 216 square meters. Well, that's the area. So this is saying I need the area to still be 216. Because I mean, otherwise, if I wanted the shortest perimeter, I would like I would let width be one and length be one, or maybe go to the extreme and let them both be zero. Of course, that would not enclose any amount of area. So see how I am trying to find the shortest perimeter, but I'm constrained by the fact that I still need my area to be 216 square meters. I don't want any deers eating my peas, so I got to have them all enclosed. Um. Okay, so. Let's go back to that perimeter equation. I'm trying to find what? The shortest value. The what? The minimum value of my perimeter. All right, let's think like calculus. If I have an equation, y equals 2x squared minus 5, and I say, all right, what's the minimum value of that? Well, you know that that would occur at a critical number. You know that all minimum or maximums occur at a critical number. So. I have an equation, I'm trying to find the minimum, and I find the critical numbers, which I do that by finding the derivative. All right, so over on our perimeter equation, we're trying to find the minimum value, so I'm thinking derivative. I need to find the critical numbers of this guy. Okay, but if I take the derivative of my perimeter right now, I've got three variables. So what do I take it with respect to? Derivative with respect to W, L, P, I mean, what is it? See, the problem there is, no matter how, what I take it with respect to, I'm going to have implicit differentiation. I have too many variables. So I want to somehow get this equation into a single variable so that I don't have to deal with this implicit stuff. All right, this is where we're talking about that area. I am constrained by the fact that I have to have an area of 216. So my area is equal to 216. Well, that means length times width is equal to 216. 
length times width, right? That's just the area of the uh, the area of my p patch, the area of my fencing, length times width. So notice over here on the right with my area equation, I have come up with something that constrains my two variables. The length and width have to work together in a way to be equal to 216, no matter what. So I created the second equation where I um, work with the same two variables. So I can say that W is equal to 216 divided by L. And I can take that W and I can plug it into my perimeter equation because both of these equations are modeling the same situation. So that means the W and L in the perimeter and the W and L in the area have to follow the same behavior. Okay, so they're modeling the same thing. So overview there, I found the equation I'm trying to optimize. That would be my perimeter equation. But that was in two variables. So I had to discover another equation, that's my area equation, that relates the same two variables. Because then I solve that equation for one variable, substitute it into my optimizing equation, leading me to have that the perimeter is equal to 2 times 216 divided by L plus 3 times L. Well, that is equal to uh, 432 divided by L plus 3 times L. That's now an equation one variable, so I can take the derivative of that with respect to L and I'll be able to find critical points, and that's where a max or min might occur. All right, um, so let's slide on and do that. So we'll go right here. So I'm going dp dl is equal to 432 times negative 1 times l to the negative 2. So I just did a power rule there. Pause the video if you don't see that. Um, okay, so that would be negative 432 divided by L squared plus 3. How do I find critical numbers? I take my derivative and set it equal to 0. I'm going to do that here. So then I have negative 3 equals negative 432 divided by L squared. Alright, so now we're just working through solving for L. Um, L squared is equal to, so we divide this by negative 3, 144, so L is equal to plus or minus 12 once I take the square root. So if my length can be plus or minus 12, that brings up a good point about, well, what can my length actually be? This is where you should think about what we can call the feasible domain. What are the actual possible lengths for L? Can it be restricted in any way? Well, length, uh, it's never going to be negative. So we know that L has to be greater than or equal to 0. Well, can it actually be 0? Well, based on what I have in my equation of 432 divided by L plus 3 times L, L can't be 0. If L is 0, I have a 0 in the denominator. That's a problem. Um, also think about if my in the practical uh, diagram here, if L is actually zero, um, well, how can I encompass any area? Uh, it wouldn't be possible. So no, L cannot actually be zero, so we would just say L has to be greater than zero. Now, is there an upper bound on L? Well, let's go over to my width equation. If I let L be pretty big, let's say 532, then width would be 0.5. So that would be a really weird shaped fence of a width of 0.5, so really skinny, but a length of 512. But it could still encompass 216 square meters. If I let the length go really, really big to, I don't know, a million, is that possible? Sure. I mean, the width would be like 0 0.005 and the length a million, which would look really odd and be really weird, but you could do it. So we talked through all that to set up this feasible domain of zero to infinity in open interval. Now I talk about that because what if I had a lower bound of say two and then an upper bound of 20? So somehow I was constrained in that way. 
Well, then I would have a closed interval and we know how to find extreme values on a closed interval. The extreme value theorem says it must occur at an endpoint or a critical number. Well, in this case, we only have a critical number of 12, but we are also on an open interval, so we should do a first derivative test here and see is 12 in fact my minimum. All right, so if I have 12 here, um, pick a test value over here of negative, oh, I'm sorry, I shouldn't do negative, uh, of 10, and then over here, 14. And we take those and we plug those into the first derivative. So f prime of 10 is equal to uh, negative 432 over 100 plus 3. Well, that would equal a negative, so a negative there. And then I have f prime of 14, which is equal to negative 430 divided by 196, which is 14 squared, plus 3. Uh, negative 432 divided by 196 is 2.2, .2, so this is going to return a positive. So I go from negative to positive, which means I do in fact have a minimum at 12. Okay, and that's my only critical number. I don't have endpoints to check. Therefore, the minimum perimeter I can get while still having 200 square meters uh, leads me with letting a length be 12 which would mean the width is equal to, well, we can go width is equal to 216 divided by 12. That would give us 18. Okay, so I just use my equation up above to find the actual width. So my width is 18, and it also asks how much fence will be needed. So the perimeter is equal to 2 times 18 plus 3 times 12, which would be 36 plus 36, or 72 meters of, take off the square, 72 meters of fence. All right, so our optimization. Find the equation you're trying to optimize, and then find another equation that constrains those same variables. Get your optimizing equation in one variable. Find the derivative to find the critical numbers. Think about the feasible domain, and then finish out your calculations to find either the minimum or the max.